Thou mayest freely eat. I only got one tree. I want you to touch. Don't even look at it. What he told us? I want you to know you Don't even need to touch it. Otherwise, we're going to die. So don't even look at it. Because there's some things in life that don't look like what they are. Amen. See, when Satan was talking to Eve and asked her, did God really say you couldn't eat of every tree of the garden? He said, no, we can eat these trees, just the one in the midst of the garden. God says, neither, don't eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And he says, you shall not surely die. God knows that in the day you eat that up, your eyes are going to be open and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. And then the Bible says, when the woman saw, you see that? When she saw that the tree was good for food, the tree that God forbid her to eat from looked just like the trees he said she could eat from. Maybe there ain't no harm in that tree. Yeah. When the Bible describes the other trees of the God, it said the same thing. It was good for food and pleasant to the eyes. When she looked at the forbidden tree, guess what it was? Good for food and pleasant to the eyes. So the forbidden tree didn't look any different from the tree she was allowed to eat from. So what harm could there be if they look like the same tree? Everything don't look like what it is. Everything don't look like what it is. Just because it didn't look like a tree that was going to cause death did not mean it wasn't going to cause death. Because as soon as they bit from it, were open. They came to an awareness of something that they had never felt before, which was fear and guilt. Mm -hmm. The fear caused them to run and try to hide themselves from God. Mm -hmm. And that guilt caused them to try to cover up themselves with fig leaves. Mm -hmm. The Bible said when their eyes became open, they knew that they were naked. They had been naked from the time that God put them. Mm -hmm. They didn't just become naked. They just didn't know they were naked. <laughs> See, that's why God don't want you fooling with some folk. Because okay. they reveal stuff that you don't need to know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They can show you some stuff about yourself that you didn't even know about yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Up in hell. Mm -hmm. So that boy, God tells us who he wants us to associate with and who he does not. Because he knows what's best for us. And what do we do like little hard-headed children All right, now. that just got to see for themselves? We look at what God has forbidden and we say, well, they don't look no different. <laughs> That's enough. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a rascal of a rascal can be a rascal of a rascal in an Armante suit. <laughs> All the rascals don't have their pants sagging down below their buttocks. Some of them wear all my suits. Drive extremely nice, classic cars. They don't make them less of a rascal. Because a rascal is a rascal. If I, my brother, all of the promiscuous sisters. <laughs> Don't wear Daisy Dukes. Well, well. You know it's hot. <laughs> oh, they put in hot pants. My Lord. I was in Walmart the other day and I started. I don't, know, I don't know what age she was, but let's just say she was what you were. And uh, she was over there in that little section where Walmart carried them. You know, Walmart carries them pants that are, that are cut off at a certain point, you know, and you can tell because the pocket, 
you know, shows you what's supposed to be, what's supposed to hold up the pocket. And, and then the pants are cut off right up under the pocket. So, I, you know, so I don't have to see it on her to know how to look. You know, cause I mean, you know, just, just, just the, the logistics of, you know, physicality, you can see that if all this right here is just pocket and then the pants cut off right there in the pocket, you ain't got much left for nothing else. <laughs> Oh, this mature lady getting her some of them pocket pants. <laughs> and her three pads up. And I just said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but that's what's, that's what's presented. Amen. Because that's what they want you to see, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they want you to see. Yeah, yeah. They're advertising. Yeah. One of the best modes of advertising is to explicitly show <laughs> the merchandise that you want to be acquired. Amen. Can y'all get that without me having to explain it? Get <laughs> <laughs> all these children in there. I'm really trying to keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got it. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Uh, uh, and so, but, 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 but there's some who will wear a very casual office attire. And they're just as promiscuous as the lady who got the pocket pants on. You follow me? Just because she got a business suit on, don't mean that her business will suit you. <laughs> you don't know what she do for a living. Amen. Amen. So the Lord says, by their fruit, you're going to know them. Stop focusing on what you see. That's right. And start dealing with what you know. There are certain things that people can say that will indicate to you right off the bat that they are not godly. And they don't have God nowhere on their mind. You can tell when it's all about them fulfilling some agenda of their own. And we just need to stop allowing ourselves to be deceived by people showing us what they want us to see rather than acknowledging what we need to see. If you're here this morning and you have fallen victim to that particular practice, the wonderful thing about our God is that he will forgive you of your sins. All you have to do is just repent and confess the fact that you have sinned. Our God will be faithful and just to forgive you. Mm -hmm. If you are not a child of God, the only way to really straighten up your life is by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You must hear the fact that Jesus died and was buried and rose the third day. According to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. You must believe that with all of your heart, John 8, 24. You must repent of your sins, Luke 13 and 3. You must confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And then be buried in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. God himself, according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 47, will add you to the church. And if you live faithfully unto death, in the end you'll go home to be with Jesus forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Won't that be a grand and glorious day? When the Lord comes back for those who belong to him. Because they kept their eyes on him. Rather than looking at something that would take their mind off of him. If you're standing in need of salvation or restoration. We ask that you will come right now. As together we stand and as we sing. When we wish that singing of the future.